arranging myself. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for having me here today. Um, I will talk about uh, Tanaka Ikko, and I will always say the surname of uh, the designers first because it's yeah, quite usual in Japan. And uh, I will talk about Tanaka's development uh, to become like one grandmaster in Japan and also like a kind of a person who represents the Japanese aesthetics. So um, maybe a way to get a first impact into or a first idea how we um, think like who did what is maybe to ask Google and I ask Google like to have an idea maybe what you know about Tanaka or what kind of impression you have about Tanaka and this came up um, I cheated a bit by typing in in Japanese because then I got in a way more variety into it but it's a very very um, colorful picture and I think it's only depicting some aspect of his work and even like in this 20 minutes, I will have only time to, to give a glimpse into his work. So to contextualize his work, I need to um, give you a, a bit of uh, information about the Japanese history of typography. Then I will continue uh, in talking about how Tanaka found his way and his expression by typography. And later on, I will also give some information how he became the ambassador of Japanese aesthetics. So let me start first with the glimpse into the history. The Japanese history of uh, typography is quite interrupted. So um, firstly, like the influence by missionaries or like first missionaries came to Japan in the middle of 16th century and they brought in also the printing technique like letterpress. Um, and uh, they used this technological part to print uh, or to, to spread their words on the one hand, but also to um, keep uh, information about Japan studies. Uh, at the same time in Kyoto, there was a very beautiful development and uh, starting to explore this new media and uh, publishing, for example, poems or uh, Japanese literature. And they explored this way of how to use wood types, but still like some of the types were connected and some were separated. However, this very promising development came to an abrupt end in the early 17th century when Japan closed down for uh, 250 years. Um, they banned missionaries and with the missionaries also all the equipment was gone from Japan. So for 250 years, Japanese artists and craftsmen focused on developing further the wood um, cut printing. Typography came in only um, again in the 19th uh, century, like middle of 19th century. And one of the pioneers of this uh, development was uh, Motogi Shozo, who um, was born into a family, uh, mainly doing translation between Japanese and Dutch, and he wanted to make a dictionary. So he invited William Gamble to cam come to Japan and teach him how to do like the fundamental things about how to cut uh, letters, but also then how to do the printing later on the book binding. Uh, at the same time, or not at the same time, but in the 1930s, there was a development starting in how to develop a Japanese typographic scheme. And um, I can only give you a few names, but the couple Yamawaki came back from Bauhaus studies in Dessau, and they started to also do graphic design. Um, and uh, at the same time, they started to teach at a uh, university set up in Tokyo, which was uh, quite inspired by Bauhaus. One of the most famous alumni of this uh, school was Kamikura Yusaku, who later on became also a leading figure in Japanese graphic design. Um, Hara Hiromu was a designer who explored uh, the mix matching of typography photography, but he was also very interested in theory. And he studied Chichold, he studied Moholinachi, Willy Baumeister, and translated it into Japanese to make it available for his fellows. Uh, also, the first design studio was set up in the 1930s and uh, Nihon Kobo started first uh, to produce and design very beautiful um, tourism magazines and mainly focusing on the tradition of Japan. But everything, or rather to say graphic design was misused by propaganda uh, starting from the 1940s and so you see like um, completely the change of how visuals are used. Still it was extremely contemporary. 
So Tanaka Iko was born in 1930s, and when he graduated from uh, the Kyoto City College of Fine Arts in 1950s, like he was the generation who need to find their own identity to define like how they work with design, how they work with images. And while he was studying, he met Yoshida Mitsukuni, who later on became a very important partner for Tanaka uh, as an art historian. Um, so in the 50s or 1950, his first employment was with Kanebo and at Kanebo he mainly focused on doing pattern design and there Tanaka learned the language of colors and at the same time um, he got in touch with international magazines. However, in the beginning like of his career, he was quite far away from doing graf graphic design. So when he changed his position to go to Sanke Shimbun, a newspaper in Osaka, he worked at the correspondence department. And after the office hours, he sneaked out to design posters or draw posters, um, kind of a self-given task for the concert hall opened by Sanke Shimbun in Osaka. And those hand-drawn posters were discovered by Yoshihara Jiro. He was um, a contemporary uh, painter and stage designer, and uh, Yoshihara hired Tanaka as his assistant. So after that, Tanaka got more and more into design, and uh, but he was like mass producing posters. So and this was one of the mass production. Um, and due to the lack of time, he just cut off uh, the text part and he made a purely typographic poster and this was his first success or his first uh, acknowledgement. He received in 1954 uh, his first award by the Tokyo ADC and I think this also gave him a kind of reflection of his own work. Almost at the same time he started uh, a long-term commitment and starting to design the posters for No Theatre, also hold uh, as a collaborative with the Sankei Shimbung, and he did this until mid of 1980s. And here you see the first three uh, posters by him, and you see like how he is still searching his way. Uh, in 1955, there was a big exhibition in Tokyo held at a department store, and all the big names who were already known or renowned before um, the war were showing their new work there, and among them also Paul Rand. Tanaka went to this exhibition, like although he needed to go by the night train, and he was extremely, like he described it as a kind of shock. So he sees Yamashiro's uh, poster, and I think you all know this poster, but this was at that time a kind of uh, like an eye opener to many designers. So the purely reduction of using typographic elements, uh, using white space, using the tension, everything is in this poster. And Tanaka got extremely inspired by that. And this was also his motivation to move to Tokyo. Then he started working for light publicity, later on changing to Nippon Design Center, and finally in 63 he opened up his own studio. So one of the posters where you can see his um, imp or the impact of Yamashiro to his work is this one where he used arrows instead of kanji but then uh, also doing it somehow reverse like black to white um, but it is already like a very strong visual, uh, yeah, visual impact that he achieves with this poster. Uh, in 59 he designed this one and it's quite difficult to see the contrast but it is like a very dark background and on this dark background he puts kanji on it and he make a fraction of the kanji so he plays with the kanji part and um, for this poster design he got again awarded and then this time by the Japan Advertising Artist Club and all the people who received an award before him were in their 40s or 50s so it was like a kind of rebellious element and a shock for all the older generation that are 29 years old can achieve this prize. And um, he got also the attention by media. And in this newspaper cutout, which I found at the CCGA um, uh, archive, uh, they are already describing like the modern interpretation of Japanese atmosphere in his design. And Tanaka himself is still saying, yeah, I want to give an impact to the Japanese design. Then another like um, important 
point came along and uh, Kamekura Yusaku who went or who was invited to no New York came back to Japan and then set up a meeting group like a working group of young designers or of different generations of designers and he gave a sharing session showing all the collective elements he brought from New York back and among those works there were work by Herb Lubalin, Lou Dorfsman, and this again like opened up Tanaka's view and you see in this poster shortly he designed shortly after that how he now starts to play with Latin letters and it's more like an image than like a text you can read but you can also see like he's still searching and he's still trying out uh, and this like encounter with American typography um, let Tanaka decide that he wants to travel to America as well, see there the contemporary designers talk to them and learn how it works to develop a very expressive design. He meets there Louis, uh, Louis Dorsman, Herb Lubalin, Peter Brettingham and all of them influenced Tanaka in a different way. For example, Lou Dorsman was an art director at CBS. He had a very big view on how um, corporate design should work in a bigger idea and really like uh, create an identity for a whole company. And Tanaka learned from Lou Dorsman how to become an art director. Herb Lubalin, on the other hand, was this more as artistic person. Like he played with type and he made uh, type become visual. And uh, Tanaka admired this work for this liveliness, for this expressiveness. Peter Brettinger uh, met Tanaka in New York and he immediately invited him first to give a talk at Pratt Institute. And um, Tanaka showed his work. And later on, uh, Brettinger invited Tanaka to come to Netherlands and have an exhibition at the gallery space of his parents. And um, I think Brettinger is a very important person who gave Tanaka a kind of um, a view from outside, like how he's, he's perceived and what's interesting to an international audience. And Brettinger wrote an article about Tanaka even before he had the exhibition in Netherlands. And in this... Um, magazine Gebrauchsgrafik from 1964, he's already uh, describing Tanaka as a contemporary Japanese um, designer who is uh, somehow or who will belong later on to the old generation. So he's foreseeing in a way Tanaka's future. Um, at the same time, I found uh, different articles, newspaper cutouts at the archive uh, that proves me that Tanaka was very interested in like what other people conceive as the Japanese style. So what makes a Japanese design to become a Japanese design? And he's um, thinking about that and Yana Gisodi, who gave also an article about this, is saying it is not um, good to mimic the old generation, the old masters, but at the same time, it will not lead you anywhere to mimic Western styles. So you need to find your own positioning. And early on, Tanaka started to write also his own articles on that. And he is saying like um, that many people already describe him as typical Japanese, but maybe not only in a positive way. And he's describing his passion about uh, Japanese traditional topics and the danger of tradition is going to be forgotten. So this um, is another poster which um, becomes also an iconic work of Tanaka. And interestingly, like um, although like a lot of information that a design is Japanese and not Chinese comes from using kana and hiragana, interestingly Tanaka in his design focused quite a lot on kanji. So this poster also for Sankeno is um, is mainly focusing on only using kanji and giving like a colorful code to it but I couldn't really see like how he made whether there's another idea about the coding itself but you can see like a structural and visual strength in it. Tanaka had two uh, typefaces which um, were a big inspiration to him. On the one hand it was a Japanese one called Iwata Boke which was a not a display typeface, but a headline typeface, and on the other hand, Bodoni. And he were looking for how to combine those two things in one design. But um, Tanaka is mainly always saying like a Bodoni is very expressive, like hard contrast, but it is elegant and uh, strong at the same time. And this description, I think, is also fitting very well to Dorfsman and um, Lubalin's work. And I think also those typefaces had an impact on Tanaka. So this 
po uh, this design or this article design is the first article where Tanaka starts to use a lettering style which later on became his like identity or his typographic identity sign. Um, you see like the big letters in the middle, he manipulated or he refined in his way um, the Iwata Boke a lot, like strengthening the contrast of strokes, making it more expressive. And um, after this, po uh, this article, he started to implement this lettering style into many other works. And by 1977, in his book about typography, he is saying that he um, did by that time or around 100 kanjis in that style. And he's already, or not foreseeing, but he is uh, saying that he's interested in developing a typeface out of that. And he worked together with Morisawa on different projects and uh, Kocho was then first um, published in the 1990s. Um, my master or my MATD was um, the research about this Kocho style. So if you want to know more about it, please read that one. Um, but I want to give another uh, also point about Tanaka because when I was reading the topic of this uh, conference as convergence, I think um, a designer's work doesn't end only by doing graphic design at one point, but maybe it is also about what kind of um, other impacts you may have on um, other designers or maybe also at other generations. And uh, I think in Tanaka's case, it is the encounter with the Japanese tradition. On the one hand, he did it on the graphic design. On the other hand, being the designer for the um, No Theatre poster series, he also digged more deeper and deeper into also the historical part or the theoretical part. And he had an encounter with um, his university friend, Yoshida Mitsukuni, and started to work on book series or publications. So this uh, series of four books was also a very iconic point in his um, life. While other designers were mainly uh, playing with uh, graphic design styles, exploring also international styles, Tanaka uh, went back to look into tradition and he um, together with other scholars, he designed those books. And this was a book series mainly focusing on a Japanese readership. Um, and later on, there were other books following. He worked on together with other curators and also editors, um, but for an international readership. So for example, like the first uh, Japan design style was uh, for an exhibition at the Victoria Albert Museum in London, the second for um, a Japan Day in Amsterdam and the third for an exhibition at Moscow. And especially like the first book, Japan Style, um, was again, I think, important because uh, the people who worked on that book got a kind of um, a mirror from uh, the Western side. And uh, because the director and also curator of this exhibition ask uh, the team to come up with ideas how to talk about tradition, uh, but also um, the present of design and craft in one book. So they needed to review like their own culture. But Tanaka, uh, and towards then, the 90s, Tanaka was also um, putting in his effort in not only doing design about Japanese tradition, but then bringing two things together. On the one hand, um, his cultural identity and his interest also in American and European typography, but at the same time, like how he can talk about this. And he was involved in two publications, which were also quite um, important for me to do the research um, in Japanese typography. So there's one quotation, I think it is fitting very well, especially yeah, Tanaka's work. And this is, without the reflection from outside, you can't see yourself. So I translated it from German to, uh, to English, but I think this is um, telling us quite a lot. Like we always need this view from outside to identify maybe what's your own style or what is maybe your own aspiration. And so to sum a bit up, like, um, yeah, to position Tanaka, I think on the one hand, he was a designer, but he was also an editor, curator. Um, he was organizing conferences and an entrepreneur. And I think the part where he 
did this conversions of Western inspiration and Japanese aesthetics was uh, to have this Japanese inner reflection, but at the same time, he made um, Japanese design visible to an international um, yeah, readership, but also to an international um, yeah, group of people. Then there's the tradition and the contemporary needs and culture and economy. So last but not least, um, therefore I think like, yeah, Tanaka was a true modernist in a way like Robin Kinross uh, put it, modernism is not a system of design, but it is a state of mind. And I think that is um, like what the story of Tanaka tells us. And at the same time, like how we maybe can manage still like doing um, for an international readership, for an international audience work, but at the same time still keeping our identity. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>